Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the brand new Foundations meta game. Today we're checking out a mono white life gain deck which uses a lot of the new Foundations cards. So this will be around in standard for five years. So now's the perfect time to pick up some of these pieces. At one mana we've got a few reprints. Healer's Hawk is back, 1-1 one, one Flying Lifelink, a slight downgrade compared to Ruin Lurker Bat which was already in standard but it's nice to have the redundancy. Cheap evasive creatures that gain life is perfect for setting up some of our synergies. Then Hinterland Sanctifier, a new card in Foundations, says whenever another creature we control enters we gain one life. We've seen this effect before, but getting a 1-2 is maybe a slight upgrade over some 1-1 one -one variants that we've had in the past. And then a Leonin Vanguard is back as well, which can potentially gain life if we control three or more creatures at the beginning of combat, getting a plus one plus one as well. So that can be a way of gaining life without necessarily needing to attack. Useful if the opponent has some large flying blockers in the way, or if we maybe want to play Vanguard and then immediately tap it for Convoke in the same turn, which can happen with our Knight Errant of Eos, which is not in Foundations, so this card will eventually rotate out, but a great source of card advantage in the meantime, as we can tap some of our creatures to help find more creatures in the top six cards of our library. And since we have so many one-drop creatures in this deck, often tapping a single creature can already provide a lot of value, and then usually we're aiming to tap maybe two or three creatures at most, so we can also find Linden at three mana. If we tap all five creatures, we can potentially find additional copies of Knight Errant as well. And then the Linden is back as well, a three mana, three, three Vigilance, saying whenever a white creature we control attacks, we gain one life. So that's another way to gain a lot of life in this deck, to set up some of our two drops. A Janny's Pride Mate is back in standard as well in Foundations. A two, two saying whenever we gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on it, which is very similar to the newer Essence Channeler. This one starts out as a two, one, as opposed to a two, two. But when it dies, we can move all of its plus one counters onto another creature. So that's a nice upgrade. Occasionally if we were to lose life it can also gain a flying and vigilance but that's not going to come up at least not in our own turn very often and then rounding out the deck we've got sheltered by ghosts as our removal of choice an aura enchanting our creature giving it one extra power a life link and a ward too so those are already quite useful especially in combination with pride mate and channeler getting bigger and bigger and then when it enters we also get to exile target a non-land permanent and opponent controls until sheltered by ghosts leaves the battlefield so this can be an incredibly swingy card especially especially if you can successfully keep your creature alive. And then last but not least, a Leyline of Hope, a card we can potentially cast for 4 mana, but can also start on the battlefield if we had it in our opening hand, which gives this deck some very busted opening hand potential if we can start out with a Leyline and play a bunch of cheap life gain cards, because now whenever we gain life, we gain that much life plus 1 instead, and as long as we have 7 life more than our starting life total, aka 27 or more in the best of 1 standard, creatures we control get plus 2 plus 2, so that can very quickly start growing all of these cheap one drops and completely overwhelm the opponent. So Leyline of Hope feels very similar to a Leyline of Resonance before it got banned in best of one, although it doesn't necessarily win you the game on turn two, it just pulls you so far ahead if you can get some of these cheap life gain synergies going. And then the mana base could not be any simpler, just 20 basic planes. So overall the deck's not too expensive to put together, especially if you already had some of the rares from past standard sets. So yeah, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a uh, fine hand. No ley line to make it truly exciting. Probably start with, I guess, Vanguard. Although if we want to maximize life gain, I guess I could also see going with Bat first and then Channeler turn two. So we can not only hit for one past the blocker, but also grow the Channeler. Alright, opponent seems to have a cut down in hand. So if that's the case, I may be better off going double one drop. And then I miss out on one life gain by not playing these main phase. But I maybe get one more extra damage in. Otherwise they would just take out the Rune Lurker. So some weird sequencing because of the cutdown, but yeah, had we played these main phase, then they take out Ruin Lurker, and we don't have three creatures for Vanguard, whereas now we at least got to hit for one, and I guess gain one in the process. 
the rest will miss. So that was their play turn one, whether or not to the rest or keep up cut down. But yeah, this is going to work out pretty nicely. Attack, grow channel or some more, and next turn drop a ley line. Alright, now slashers are concerned, since that can maybe set up the combo with their demon. But we'll still attack with Ruin Lurker, so we can pump up the team with Leyline. So now we have two creatures that can get in front of the Slasher. Could have maybe considered attacking with Channeler just to move the counters onto Vanguard. Although it's not necessarily a trade I'm excited to make. Keeping three creatures in play also important to enable Vanguard. Bodon did actually have the combo. Now we can just trade Vanguard for Slasher. And then go ahead and attack. Probably fine to send in the Ruin Lurker just to gain some more life. So yeah, our opponent's hand was pretty good. They had lots of cheap removal and then the two combo pieces. But uh, we'll see if we can still get there. If our opponent's got an annoyance with Affliction, that could exile Channeler without giving us the counters. But it's just going to be a Ritual Chamber making a 6-6 Demon. And Knight Errant, an interesting draw now. Probably fine to... Convoke just tapping the two flyers. So Channeler can still attack. And uh, take it from there. Won't be able to find Linden this way, but most of our other creatures are still good to go. Alright, I'll grab the two drops. Play another Channeler. And attack. So now if they were to trade, I can move all the counters onto the uh, author channeler, which is still good. And then which of them do we want to prioritize? Yeah, I guess Bloodletter is just scarier with a slasher and also pretty good with an uh, annex. We get to scry. And yeah, that also cannot be underestimated. Scryed three lines to the bottom. Significantly improving our draw steps. And a 6 6 demon is looking mighty small here. Although they can knock our life total down to where Leyline doesn't pump our creatures anymore. And Liliana is acceptable. Something suspicious is going on. And for once it's not my It's still a bit risky to sank channeler, because our opponent could then remove the creature I target with the plus one counters and response. So yeah, probably just ditch a bat. Opponent's got an annex. But we're still at 29. And yeah, we'll just empty out our hands. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. They're just too far behind. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Both Pride Mates and Channeler play quite well alongside Linden. And even if we miss a third lane for a turn, playing another one of our two drops in the meantime isn't a bad thing. Opponent on red-white burn. So this should be a decent matchup. And in this case, I think getting Pride Mate in play sooner 
gets the nod just because her opponent's deck is playing a lot of two damage burn spells, which wouldn't be able to take out Pride Mate single handedly. Right, Challenger, we can now also block. So no great attacks. And yeah, Linden's looking good. We have a backup in case they remove it, but Pride Mate's already hitting incredibly hard. I guess this could also be more of an aura deck, in which case they might have their own sheltered by ghosts, which would be a good answer to the Pride Mate. Usually don't see Swiss Spear in the aura builds, but uh, we'll see. Opponent's going to Monstrous Rage to get in six additional damage for one mana. That's pretty good. But yeah, they're still facing a lot of damage on the way back. And Sheltered by Ghosts is a pretty lethal top deck. So, can play that. Exiling at this point. Yeah, doesn't matter. Opponent throws in the towel onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Leyline to start out, and then a 1-2-3 curve. That synergizes beautifully. And let's see if our opponent can disrupt us. So far, so good. So we can expect some burn spells. A Roaring Furnace, a good answer to the Pride Mates. They'll probably go for Linden first. If we can get to 27 life, then uh, our team gets plus two plus two. So we're close. So blue red room control deck, it seems. We're just gonna empty out our hands to enable Vanguard. And we might see removal on Linden. All right, so team has plus two, plus two. A lot harder for burn spells to take out our creatures now. So it's possible our opponent wasn't paying attention and kind of missed a boat. So yeah, it's going to take something special for the opponent to get back in the game. About to take 8 damage. We gain 4 more. And it's going to be a Malcolm. Alright, I guess we could still be in trouble if we're putting some sort of Omniscience deck. Discards it with Malcolm and then replays it with the 4-mana um, instance. But uh, yeah, that's a bit of a stretch. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand needed like a ley line to be truly excellent, or maybe a channeler or pride mate to start picking up plus one counters. As is, we can gain a lot of life, but it's not really boosting up our creatures in any way. So it's still okay. We might draw into some of those payoffs, but definitely not as powerful as it could have been. And haven't seen Rot Priest in a long time. Is their opponent a poison deck? Could have also considered playing Vanguard first, so we can hit for two, but we might see some ground blockers. And Infectious Bite immediately applying a bunch of poison. And yeah, poison is the perfect counter to a life gain deck, since it doesn't matter how much life we gain if our opponent's just poisoning us to death. So this might actually be one of our worst matchups imaginable. Opponent's got more removal, which means Vanguard's not gonna be able to block or trigger next turn. And yeah, it's just a lot of removal here, plus proliferate. 
So this turn one rock priest is putting in work already up to six poisons, so could be dead here. Inquiry applies another poison. That lets them refuel. Alright, now Pride Mate's a fine draw. But if on average one and two cards in the opponent's deck apply a poison, we're still gonna be dead in two turns. Servant does not apply poison, but it does have death touch, so I guess our opponent's playing a Finn the Fangbearer deck. That would make sense. And yeah, Infectious Bite with Death Touch creatures is also very effective, since you can take out a very large creature with that. Alright, so it's not looking good. We're at 9 poison, so any additional poison will kill us. I think I still need to tap Linden to play Knight Errant, so I can still find a 1-drop and cast it. Uh, so I don't think I can afford to attack, since chances are our opponent's gonna trade for the servants and then we did find two one drops at least we're still at 20 life but that doesn't matter so servants can potentially be sacrificed to find a card I guess they haven't committed a crime yet, so I could let the servant just hit me for one. Sure. But they might just be sandbagging a way to apply poison as we see Vraska, which can just proliferate. And that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a nice hand. A ley line to start out, and then a lot of ways to cheaply gain life and get on the board. I think Healer's Hawk for starters, unlikely to attack next turn and still gain a life. And now we can go Sanctifier into another Hawk. And then next turn we'll already be able to give the team plus two plus two. Alright, opponent does have the bat sadly to take away our sanctifier. But Linden was probably our best top deck now. Attack, so the team will have plus two before going to blockers. And yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do about this start. They had to turn two baits. And it's already 10 life versus 40. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Hoping we can keep our creatures in play to convoke Knight Errant. And then and get some of our life gain synergies going up against what could be the red-white tokens deck, which is not a great matchup, mostly because of Sunfall likely being in the opponent's deck. Small chance it's a burn deck. Alright, Lightning Helix could still go either way. Get to move the counter onto the Hawk at least. So this is a turn where we find out if we're facing burn or control. Manifold Mouse, alright, so it is aggro. And it's actually more of an enchantment deck. So don't usually see Lightning Helix there. Alright, so Knight Errant. I think it's reasonable to just tap Pride Mate and keep attacking with Hawk to grow the Pride Mate. If I tap both, then... I can still maybe play one drop, but that's not super important. Now we're mostly finding one drops with Knight Errant anyway. And what do we like? 
probably double Rune Lurker. There's not too many ways their opponent can give flying. I guess there is the aura that gives flying. Is that a reason to grab a Vanguard? Maybe we'll go one of each. Upside of Vanguard is that it can gain life without needing to attack, so it's good with another Knight Errant. And can grow Pride Mate before attacking. Now Vindicator, that one's pretty scary when suited up. And our opponent's definitely gearing up for some auras here. And in fact, Valgable's Lair already an enchantment giving 2 plus 1 counters. So next turn could hurt. But in the meantime, we're not going to worry about it. Just going to gain a bunch of life. It is satisfying to curve out with this deck and play Knight Errant to find more goodies. And yeah, we'll pick up more plus one counters through Sanctifier. Found Linden. And for this turn, Channeler. Play Channeler, gain more life. Pride Mate can attack. And yeah, all these life gain triggers are adding up. Put on Chumps. And at 30 life. I'm hoping we can survive a big hit here, even with their current setup. And yeah, definitely not too threatened by Manifold Mouse with Offspring. And next turn Linden's gonna be devastating. With Channeler and Pride Mates getting a ton of counters. Could even trade for Knight Errants. Sure, why not? Alright, so... Yeah, opponent's just gonna throw in the towel right away. But, uh, yeah, can kind of do the math here to see how many life gain triggers would happen. If we play Linden, play Bat, that's already two triggers from Sanctifier. And then we're probably fine to attack all out. So that's, I guess, another Vanguard trigger beforehand. And then seven more from creatures attacking. So at least ten more counters on both Channeler and Pride Mate. So we missed out on a real dopamine boost. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's missing a one drop. Which is pretty important when we're trying to set up Knight Errant. Otherwise our hand's going to be a little clunky. And double Linden's also not ideal. So... Yeah, there are definitely games where just curving Pride Mate into a Shelter by Ghost could be pretty effective. Don't know if this is one of them. Yeah, you know what, I'll try it. Third land goes a long way. Finding some other cheaper creatures, which at the end of the day is most of our deck, is also fine. And our opponent is on a red aggro. So it should be a winnable matchup. I think I still play Pride Mate just to be mana efficient, even though sometimes waiting to get a lifelinker going first can ensure that Pride Mate picks up a counter. But yeah, opponent just plotting a slick shot, so coast is clear. And could go for Linden attack. Since we have a replacement, so if our opponent's got a burn spell, they're somewhat likely to want to take out Linden. And then next turn it can attack with Vigilance. And then still maybe tap for Convoke. So, Puna needs something pretty special to just straight up win the game here. I don't think we need to put Linden in harm's way. Turn inside out is fine. Monstrous Rage. So if they do also have a Cell Sword, we're dead. And actually looks to be the case. Wow. That's impressive. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand's functional. Got some interaction, some card advantage. Ways to gain life. And then two of our life gain payoffs. Our hand gets a little bit less exciting if the Sanctifier were to die. Uh, 
And maybe start with Channeler so we can move its counters. Right, Deep Cavern Bats probably takes Sheltered by Ghosts. And Rune Lurker was a decent pickup. So I can go Pride Mates plus Rune Lurker to maximize our life gain triggers. And then Knight Errant is a good leftover. Assuming we get to keep it in hand. Slasher, Serpent's gearing up for the Blood Letter combo. And we're gonna play Knight Errants. Potentially tapping all of my creatures. Since we'll likely find more blockers for Slasher. And don't necessarily want to trade these. Ooh, that's a, kind of a swing and a miss. Just finding a healer's hawk. But our creatures are getting nice and swole, and our opponent concedes. I'll take it. On to the next one. We're on the draw with a keepable hand. Lots of one drops make it easy to convoke knight errands. And these one drops also gain life. Although it looks like our opponent's got a burn spell, which is likely taking out the bat. So that's going to slow down our progress of convoking a knight errand. But the good news is we're up against a burn deck, so any life gain is quite valuable. Although Slick Shot's the type of card that can deal 10 plus damage by itself. Linden, a good pickup. Carnival enters tapped. Take one. But it might be more than one. Monstrous Rage, sure. I would rather see pump spells as opposed to burn spells taking out my creatures. Especially when we have cards like Linden and Knight Errant coming up. So yeah, back up to 18 already. And now Screaming Nemesis. Alright, that's a card that can prevent us from gaining a life for the rest of the game. So I'll take three for now. We'll still be able to gain life next turn. But then if they have any burn spells, they can just point it at their own Nemesis. And then we're basically shut off from gaining a life for the rest of the game. But that's alright. We'll still get a nice bit of life gain in here. So play Hawk. Attack with... Ruin Lurker and Linden, I want to say, and then I can still convoke Knight Errants. Uh, let's see. I guess I can attack with Sanctifier as well, since Linden has Vigilance. Although, if I find a 1-drop with double Sanctifier, I can gain quite a bit of life here. So, yeah, I think we'll try this, and then I can convoke and still play a 1-drop. And we did find a 1-drop, and then we'll make it maybe Channeler to start growing. So we're back up to 23. And that's good enough. Despite our opponent having a Screaming Nemesis on the battlefield, they're just too far behind. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And could use maybe one more cheap creature to set up Knight Errant. But I'll give it a shot. Fabled Passage points towards a slower deck. So if we can draw another 1-drop, it would allow us to convoke Knight Errant turn 3 pretty easily. Could still do it without it, but we might be missing out on a bit of value. Speaking of value, opponent on the domain deck, it seems. Don't think I sheltered up the beanstalk. But yeah, this is going to be a rough matchup, mostly because of Sunfall being able to exile our board.
opponent has two types, so they can cast a four mana Leyline Binding. So not quite. And I need to Convoke while I get the chance. And then, which one do we prefer? Vanguard can trigger right away. Hits a bit harder. Maybe that's what we need. And Sheltered by Ghost can get rid of a ground blocker. And then Vanguard can also trigger the same turn we convoke another Knight Errant. Opponent did have a get lost. And there's some red mana in there too. And now Overlord sets up one mana Leyline Bindings. Alright, so still gonna hope they don't have a Sunfall. Convoke. I guess tapping three creatures is enough. Says that we'll find Linden. And I'm probably not interested in playing out more creatures here into a potential sweeper. Pride Mate plus maybe a Sanctifier. Alright, so Sunfall's gonna be brutal no matter what. And yep, yeah, they have it. So that's probably game over here, but we'll stick around for a turn or two. Does not seem like they have a Leyline Binding in hand, at least. A Rune Lurker, probably not good enough. At this point we're looking for another Knight Errant to get back on the board. And now it's going to be a hard cast Overlord. They still have two mana for their Incubator token. And Linden wasn't bad. So if Pride Mate were to attack and goes up to 6-6, six, six, they can still trade. Problem now is that they could easily have another Get Lost in hand. But I kind of want to cast a Sheltered by Ghosts. Maybe put it on the Sanctifier and then also have the option of exiling their Incubator token. Yeah, opponent had the Get Lost. So now if I get a non-land on top, Pride Mate can still attack as a 7-7. Seven, seven. And I'll keep another Sheltered. Since they don't have the mana for the Incubator now. But yeah, still super far behind. Pwn's got a full hand. I'm sure with more removal or expensive spells that draw more cards without the Beanstalk. So we have to be pretty naive here to think that we'll still get there. Incubator animates. Take 11. And a temporary lockdown deals with Pride Mates, as well as their Incubator. Don't have much of a choice. Could also get a, a lockdown out of here, but then our opponent draws again off Beanstalk. So we'll just get rid of the Overlord instead. Attack. But now Linden won't be able to get past the second Overlord. And now any removal spell is going to be extremely painful. And there's Atraxa, so yeah, that's definitely game over now. But the game realistically ended when Sunfall got cast. But the problem with holding back in the face of a potential Sunfall is that this deck is just going to have a much better late game, and sooner or later they'll find a sweeper. So, I think your best 
odds of winning are to just commit and then kind of cross your fingers that they don't have the sweeper. And then if they stumble a little bit, you might get there. But our opponent had a great start with Beanstalk and then Overlord early, ramping and drawing extra cards. And now we're just dead on board. All right. So you win some, you lose some. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems fine. I really could use, I guess, a third land or some extra one mana creatures to set up Convoke. But Bat into Pride Mate's a good start. We've got removal and card advantage. The only risk is that we draw more expensive spells and our hand ends up being a bit clunky. Facing an aggressive red deck. So, yeah. Should be a decent matchup. Although if they remove our creatures early, we might also get stranded with Knight Errands that we cannot cast. Opponent on the Pyromancer build. A card I have tried out in the burn deck. Ended up going in a slightly different direction for my build. Which uh, you can also check out. And we'll take one. Pride Mate's still looking good. We're up to a 3-3, and some of their two damage burn spells may not be able to take it out. But I'm sure they'll still have a Lightning Helix and Lightning Strike potentially too. And there it is. So yeah, not an ideal start for us by any means. The land is also not what we were hoping for. So I can't quite convoke a Knight Errant, and there's no amazing target for Sheltered by Ghosts. But maybe I still play it on the Vanguard, exiling Swiss Spear, don't want Pyromancer coming back and dealing more damage. Yeah, maybe that's fine. And then the ward means it's a little bit harder for the opponent to remove as well. Vanguard can gain additional power, so putting the lifelink there makes sense when we already have lifelink on the bat. But yeah, putting Sheltered by Ghosts on a Knight Errant would have been my preferred play. Eh, opponent does have the shock. So they get their Swiss Spear back, at least it takes their entire turn. And no prowess on Swiss Spear. So with how poorly this game is going, we're still in it. Finding two more one drops. And then next turn we can kind of empty out our hands. Ooh, ball lightning, spicy. Do I take six? I guess I do. Can block the next ball lightning. Alright, Sanctifier was a great pickup. Vanguard gains life without needing to attack. So finding Linden and in this matchup might just be Sanctifier over Pride Mate since I just care more about gaining a life. We already have a lot of power and toughness going and the band can hit. I'll leave double Night Iron back so we don't die to some weird combination of burn spells or ball lightnings. But yeah, grabbing a Pride Mate also would have been reasonable since with Linden we can very quickly grow it. Opponent plots a slick shot now, that's fine, and a lava runner, not particularly impressive. So this should be putting the game out of reach for our opponents. And everyone but Sanctifier attack. And we're back to 21 life gonna be 23 in a second and our opponent explodes awesome so yeah mono white life gain seems to be the real deal in standard especially in the current best of one ladder which is often dominated by aggressive strategies as opposed to more controlling decks so you're usually more worried about getting burnt out as opposed to facing tons of sweepers which is exactly where this type of strategy shines quickly gaining a lot of life but the life gain also has a purpose growing our threats and enabling cards like leyline of hope and having a leyline also gives you that busted opening hand potential which gives this deck an additional 
boost, especially in best of one, where proactive strategies are often rewarded. So yeah, I can highly recommend this deck. It's also perfect for doing your dailies, not only getting wins quickly, but also casting lots of cheap white spells to get those white quests completed, or attacking with lots of creatures if you've got that quest instead. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.